my name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully, we both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And, wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Another review. Woo-hoo. Yep. And well, another, maybe woohoo. No, no, it is a woohoo because okay. it's another five star. <laughs> oh, woohoo! Yeah, it is a woo-hoo. This one is from Vivid Five One Five. Oh, I like that. And name. I'm taking the reins back of the of the microphone, so I get to read this one now. Of course. Yeah. Well, this one comes to us through Apple Podcasts. It's a five star review. The topic of which says priceless. Oh. Yep. And it goes on to say. I literally stumbled upon this podcast one morning last year and have been a fan ever since. My morning walk is typically four miles to a local lake or park, and I have my podcasts queued specifically to keep my pace moving. Unfortunately, I tripped on the raised concrete that morning and dropped my phone. When I picked it up to resume, the podcasts were all scrambled, and I just hit play, and this showed up. (gasps) It was meant to be. It was kismet. They, they're going to say, keep up the great work, wonderful guest speakers, and fantastic hosts, sending many blessings for 2024. Vivid 515, you have risen to the top of the favorite reviewers <laughs> category. This is so cool because it shows how the universe just kind of aligned itself to give you exactly what you need at the perfect moment in which you need it. That's awesome. I love that so much. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Vivid, for sending us this, uh, for leaving us this review on Apple Podcasts. And if you'd like to hear your review read on the air, feel free to go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review there. Or go to skepticmanifestation.com, leave us a voicemail or an email, or you can leave us a review directly on the site as well. So what do you think, Karen? I was just thinking they can still leave a review on Apple Podcasts, even if it's not five stars. I know, but, you know, (laughs) how nice would it be to leave a five star review? It would be nice. (laughs) (laughs) If you have less than a five star, maybe go to skepticmanifestation.com, leave us a review there. Because we do really appreciate constructive criticism. We do want to make the show better. And we would appreciate hearing from you any thoughts that you might have. We sure would. So, meanwhile, I think we've dallied enough. Why don't we get started with the show? Today's topic centers around a heart-opening, consciousness-raising, infinite intelligence that we are all already partaking in without even knowing it. Now, although that might be a a simplistic way of approaching the topic, uh, we are already partaking in it. However, we are missing a very specific element that activates this powerful medicine. And we're talking, of course, about the power of cacao. Uh, With us here today to separate fact from myth is Cacao Ceremony Facilitator Brian Egan. Brian, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you, thank you for having me. Mm. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, I'm really grateful to be here. Oh, well, we're, we're, we're thrilled to have you. Uh, let's just, right off the bat, set the table. Uh, cacao ceremonies are um, very well known in South America and all those kinds of places. Uh, and um, let's tackle the t- tough subject first, right? Here you are, right. a white guy, who is facilitating <laughs> yeah. cacao ceremonies. Um, first, let's talk, what what does cacao do? We, we all know about ayahuasca and psilocybin and things like that, but cacao is a very much more gentle medicine. Let's talk about that. And then how did you fall into this facilitating of, of this wonderful medicine? So yeah, right off the bat, the, the elephant in the room. Yeah, I'm yeah. just a, a, a white guy facilitating, practicing. I'm holding the sacred space because it, there's not someone here holding that space. Mm-hmm. And I, I recognize that. And I also recognize that, that this medicine is, is way beyond the shell that we give it with chocolate. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that the more that we can embody that sacredness of it and the real depth of its ability to open us into a higher heart consciousness, which is, which is what ascension and evolution is. You know, it's, it's moving from the beyond the physical, the three lower dimensions of the physical, up into the redemption part of the heart, where we can be open 
and connect honestly and openly and with love in every opportunity, in every situation in our life. Mm -hmm. And the more that I've worked with this medicine and learned from it, the more I've been able to allow my own heart space to open further and further. And, and our heart, our heart gives a vibration of coherence. So um, it, it is our, uh, are you guys familiar with the HeartMath Institute? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's commonplace now. 20 years ago when I was learning about it, it was, it was, it was like, what is this? This is pretty awesome, you know? And like, why is this a thing? Why are we studying how the heartbeat goes? How can we, how does this right. show us, you know, show us the future, show us the past, you know, tap into those core vibrations of what we are. Mm -hmm. And for those that may not be familiar with heart math, uh, we're talking, with, of course, about the fact that a heart has its own intelligence and there's an institute here mm -hmm. that is actually looking into researching that intelligence and all the different aspects of how the heart affects us in everyday life, way beyond mm -hmm. just pumping blood through our systems. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And on the other side of the heart, I want to say that I do appreciate, you know, you're coming in, we talked about you're this white guy, and it, there's a difference between appropriating and honoring. Right. And just hearing, you know, the little conversation we had before this, hearing how you talk about it and how you present it, it is just filled with so much love. And I just want to make sure that everyone really understands that, yeah. that this is about honoring this, this sacred medicine. Right. It's, it's not about me. It's not about what my skin looks like. It's not about the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the past of our, our futures uh, or, or where our future is going. It, it's about that. It's about where we are right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about, and, 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 it, and the heart and the therabromines that are activated in the cacao and all these things, they, they move us, they open us, they, they bring us into that space. You know, this, this fell into my lap. I, 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 I didn't ask for this medicine to mm -hmm. be a part of my life. Mm -hmm. It showed up, and it like it just, and I was like, okay, well, I, I guess that's where we're moving, you know. Like, I started the story with you guys a little bit earlier, and I'll, I'll tell you again. So, like, the I'll tell you the end of it, which was really just like, oh, well, okay, you know. And and as all these things go, and, and as your spiritual journey progresses, it becomes to a point where it does teach you, mm -hmm. like the the journey teaches you the the extra influences, the other guides show up and teach you and they show you where you're going mm -hmm. you know and and this this really just showed up somebody contacted me because i've been leading the meditations for years and uh, she had come to them and her brother was coming to town and he he had been leading cacao ceremonies with his partner who um who lived on a giant 40 acre cacao farm in guatemala and she organized massive cacao ceremonial um like multi-tribe gatherings to like bring and honor cacao you know, it was their 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 lifeblood. You know, and so he brought that medicine here, and um, and he shared it with me and, and taught me and 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 explained to me the ritual part. And I saw how that fits with what we're doing, mm -hmm. with what these sound meditations are, and what all the the work of showing up for people in a spiritual way and holding space is. Mm -hmm. And that's what this shamanic spiritual journey is. And 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 that with with the cacao and so so he didn't even get to lead the first one with me and i was like what and he's like no you can do this and i'm like what are you talking no no, no. He's, <laughs> he's like you can do it because he had to go out of town and i'm like that's okay i actually got to lead with him with him after that and he was like it, it, it was it was really awesome but Brian, it, it was meet wolves <laughs> yeah it's like here you go run out and you can do it um and i'm like ah, all right and so uh, that's been you know a stumbling journey and, and i'm glad that our whole spiritual community including the ara and everybody here has shown up mm -hmm. and and held space for me while I was learning. Right. That, you that know, is, and yeah, that and is, that, that's just so wonderful. And, and before we get too deep into that, um, I want to kind of clarify because at the beginning we said everyone's partaking in this because everybody eats chocolate and everybody loves right. chocolate. Cacao is different. First, can you just tell us how, like, what's the difference? So someone can't just, you know, buy a candy bar and think, all right, I'm doing this, you know, why am I not healed? Uh, is that what I'm doing wrong? I think that's what you're doing wrong. Mm, dang, because I've been eating a lot of chocolate. <laughs> so what is sacred cacao, and how so, does that differ from chocolate? Um, well, the chemical composition isn't too much different other than all the additives and things, but um, as a whole, uh, cacao is the raw form of, of what chocolate becomes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the process is really interesting. I got to go to a cacao farm in, in Costa Rica and, and really, like, check it out and, and see the whole process of how they cook the beans down and they let it ferment first in the bag, of, like, they're like football-sized. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. pods, you know, and they take out and each one has the little things in it and each one has the seed inside. Uh, it, it, it's really awesome and um, it has a sweet flavor, the white goo mm -hmm. that's on the inside and another part of it. Um, so uh, 
it, it's going back to the question. So the, is it the being sacred? yeah, what makes like is it a certain type of cacao that's used for these ceremonies? Well, yeah, cer ceremonial grade cacao is um, is just processed in the rawest form it can be, okay. and it's blessed, and, and songs are sung to it, and um, to help infuse it with the, the intention and the medicine of what it's supposed right. to be mm -hmm. creating. And I think that's key, right? It, it, you can't just get, you know, go to Costa Rica or Ecuador or wherever and get a cacao and create your own, I mean, I guess you could create your own ceremony, but it's not, it's the intention that you put right. in well, it. Right. Well, and and that's not yeah. to nullify those things because people do that all the time. Sure. Like there's there you can you can buy little packets of you know ceremonial like cacao. ceremonial cacao yeah. like just like individual things you can like I don't think there's K cups of them but there's you know <laughs> but really like it's 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 becoming very commonplace um, and accepted as right. as a sacred rite. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of right. women are using it for womb healing and for holding that sacred energetic. Like it's like getting an energetic hug. Mm. That's right. what. That's oh, why chocolate's like that. so, so like <gasps> soothing. Yeah. You know, it chocolate is, is soothing. It we is. go to it for that feeling that it creates. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it opens up your heart space so that you can honestly connect because you're more in your heart space, and your heart space is the space where you're in a, a point of redemption, right. and like, and redemption is about acceptance mm -hmm. and accepting all people and all cultures and all things. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? And we should definitely talk about the fact that though this is a medicine. Right, a, a typical ceremony with medicine, like ayahuasca, psilocybin, it's a v much more gentle medicine. It's not something that's going to take you on a trip, for example. You, people are right. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. you'll just feel like more hyper and more uplifted and more excited about things. And, you and know? more connected to others right. and things and, like that. Right. And so that that's what's so much fun about the cacao is that you really can like, you just feel so like blissed out when you leave and and it's it's not just the cacao though it's it's the infusion of of the vibration of the medicine mm -hmm. you know and that's right. where the the Icaro which is what I'm going to share with you guys in a little bit comes in you know and so the Icaros are the medicine songs and many different um, tribal traditions have their own medicine songs that they work with um, the ones that I use are from the Peruvian tradition and the Shipibo and they um, they are the Icaro, which are the medicine songs that are used um, in their work with ayahuasca and with just general healing. You know, it, it's right. not it's not always about using the the medicine itself. It's about because it, it was never about the medicine. It's mm -hmm. about the vibration and understanding it. And as the shaman becomes comfortable with that, they never needed the when when they do the ceremonies in their tribes, they don't the the tribes people don't take the medicine because they oh. don't need to. Right. Right. And as the shaman, if the shaman does, they're going into that state to be the transmission mm -hmm. and to right. be the bridge between the energy and the healing. Right. And so if someone wanted to attend one of these ceremonies, what would they expect? Like, how does the ceremony go? For cacao? Um, well, we um, get set up and set intentions first. Um, I've done them a number of different ways, um, but the, the core at the beginning is, is a clearing um, of the space with. Um, usually with um, sage or palo santo or some form of a gopal, um, like a, a energy clearing. And, and what I've added into it over the years um, is when I do my clearings for people, um, I'll, I'll blow energy through them and I'll also tone energy through them um, with this sound and this vibration. Um, just to help them clear their whole field. So like mm -hmm. the one we're going to be doing today, the ikra that I'm going to be singing is called uh, uh, Cleansing the Spirit. So we're going to be clearing out our energetic spiritual field around us so that we are just in our own selves, mm -hmm. in our own vibration, right. in our own heart coherence. Right, right. right. And, and then, and so now you're touching on that element, that missing element that we talked about at the very beginning of the show, that the sacredness uh, of it. That even though we're all partaking in it, mm -hmm. there's, there's that missing element, and that is the intention, but also the vibrational, the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the sacredness of the medicine the holding space of it all. It, it's all of that together is what makes this such powerful medicine. It's not just, you know, pop a piece of chocolate in your mouth. and Yeah, but, but think about that. Every time you eat a piece of chocolate, every time you eat a piece of chocolate, go into it with intention. Like, think about it. Say, thank you for this. I mean, gratitude. Gratitude activates the highest vibrational frequency that we are. 
You don't know how happy you're making him right now. <laughs> you just gave him a reason to right. go out and buy a case of Hershey's. <laughs> yep. As long uh, as I'm using gratitude. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I don't have a problem clearing all of our scales from the house. I'll be, I'll be fine. Uh, is, okay, so, yes. The impurities, I hate to use the word impurities, but, you know, does sugar and the additives and things like that in a Hershey's bar, for example, Probably not the best oh, when it comes to Oh, of course, you know. of course, right. And, yeah. and, you know, and unfortunately we are in this environment, so we mm -hmm. have to transmute the energy in it as well. And so, you know, it's, it's like we're not, we're not all becoming breatharians and we're going to live in the mountains and we can't be around any energies that are difficult. We have to be in these energies and we have mm -hmm. to be in this dimension, right? And we have to be in, in America, right? And we mm -hmm. have to be, you know, like, you know, the, and, and, and these are the, the confines of what we're sitting in. So right. in that we, we take on those roles and we have to transmute that energy at the same time, even right. if it's difficult. Right. Well, it's interesting that we talk about the vibration of sound as being part of this healing frequencies and things like that. Um, Edgar Casey, in his readings, right. uh, once said that the medicine of the future would sound. be sound. Sound and vibration and music. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, Wayne Perry, uh, one of the godfathers of sound healing. <laughs> I've had him on a couple of my conferences. He, um, he's amazing. Um, he's, him and I are doing a class in a couple of months. Um, on, it'll be like online and stuff. He's in California and he does this. Um, he wrote the book um, Sound Medicine. Oh yeah. And um, it is, it, it really respects and tries to honor the fact that the human voice is the perfect healing tool. And, wow. and that's Wayne, Wayne's quote, you know, it's right. uh, the human voice if you clear it completely, it will heal everything in your life, in your experience. He, the vocal analysis thing he does, mm -hmm. it takes apart your voice and like really looks at in the, through a spectral analysis of like the way it sits and how that sits in like how they tie it to the different correspondences with your um, like how mind-body connection mm -hmm. kind of a thing. You know, but like sound-body connection. Right. You know, it's like a different angle to it. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, no, you be perfectly yeah. fine. But uh, so basically, you're not saying that I can go around and go, "I'm healed," and then suddenly I'm healed, right? There's more to it than that, or or is it that? <laughs> well, there's you just blew out the there's a lot more. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> but, uh, but there's a yeah, there's a there's way more than that. <laughs> but, I had but, a feeling. I had a but, feeling. But singing brings joy to every space. You know, it does. Yeah. It it does. There's not a way that it doesn't. You know, and and I've I've learned that with like. Because the things that I do with my vocal work, it, I've been doing for 22 years, and it's been teaching me these last mm -hmm. few years, like really, like splitting my voice in different ways, overtoning and undertoning at the same time, Ooh. and watching the sounds blend, it's and like a double it's stop. really neat. And and as I learned to sing the Icaro and work with the the, the sound medicine, like even deeper, like because I teach this, you know, I have mm -hmm. a sound healing, the sound healing conservatory is the school that I have, and I've been huh. teaching it for this is our fifth year. And that's why I said Wayne's come in. I've done conferences online and all kinds of things. Like I've been working with the ARI for almost, you know, been working with the ARI for 20, 22 years. Wow. I've been, you know, part of the ARI for almost 30 years, you wow. know, since I was a kid. I've been like, it's, it's been my like, and we just ended up here. You know, everything yeah. gets placed where it's supposed to be. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So it is what it is. So I, I love that. Thank you. For so once you really got involved, like full on in the sound healing, mm -hmm. how did you notice like its effect on you? Did you notice yourself changing, feeling healthier, yeah, more energy? Yeah, it's super healed everything in my life. Yeah? Like, um, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. The, you know, I, I could have like a book of stories, I'm sure, but the one most significant thing would be my son. Um, he's five years old now, but mm -hmm. I had to learn how to sing under my breath to sing in the NICU, because he was in the NICU for the first five months of his life. Oh, wow. So like, when he was in there, like I couldn't just be like singing and trying to bring bulls and like we, we a couple of times we snuck bulls into the <laughs> but they let us because they know that it's you know like yeah. that it's yep. that oh, is here they come again <laughs> yeah they they actually invited us to come back in to do um some sound for the families and stuff in that's the, amazing in the wow. room and stuff like here that. in virginia in at the yeah in um at chkd in, oh, in norfolk wonderful. yeah that is so, wonderful yeah we were, we had to, we pretty much moved in so <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but you could hear it, you know, I'd be toning for him and I'd hear the other babies in the room calm down too, you know, because they know and they could feel it, you wow. know, it's not, because it, sound, sound creates space, mm -hmm. you know, there's like, you know, space and time, right? Yeah. So like light acknowledges time, right. sound acknowledges space. Let's take a break and we'll be right back.
And now back to the skeptic metaphysicians. So uh, we're going to hear you perform some of those healing sounds and, and, and we're, we'll experience those healing frequencies uh, firsthand in just a, a few minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, but tying it back to cacao and the sacred ceremonies and things like that, uh, it is important to really stress the, the relationship between sound so, and the ceremony. So how it activates, right? Mm -hmm. yes. so, so I was just talking about sa uh, time and space, right? Which are acknowledged by the present moment, right? Mm -hmm. right? By the here and the now, right? In our heart space, which is our presence, mm -hmm. right? So we, when we activate all those things at the same time, right? With the sound, with our breath, with our intentions, with the medicine, which comes in and activates in our body and gets our cells even more activated and excited. It like just pushes us into this divine, open, clear state mm. where we can look at ourselves through this technology, almost like looking back into ourselves and say, hey, wait, I can be more loving and compassionate in this moment. You know, chocolate will soften your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, cacao does soften your heart. You know, it is, that, that's what we're doing, right. you know. Cause so do you recommend piping chocolate into the water source? Because <laughs> 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 it feels like we kind of need that across the whole world, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Okay, the main line of the chocolate. Sound. <laughs> chocolate IVs will set up at places. Yeah. What is it, um, the, the God tone, or what was that called? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like the chanting or something, there's like, what, is it called well, the God? Well, the oh, the, so the sound, so this is, oh, thank you for, thank yeah. you for saying that. No. Uh, <laughs> in my ceremonies, another one of the, because we I didn't finish talking about the ceremony, right? Yeah. So, so I just talked about the clearing, right? Very so spacious. after the clearing, we go in, and when I make the cacao, I'll usually do it with everybody um, toning. So they'll all be toning the sound of ah, which is the sound of God. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, why I say that is, it's from Wayne Dyer. Uh -huh. if you're familiar with Wayne Dyer I was, uh, from his book, The Secrets of Manifesting Your Destiny. I listened to that the set I of tapes am. a thousand yeah. times. And the ah sound that you do, and if you mm -hmm. look up online, probably on YouTube somewhere, um, Wayne, Ma uh, Wayne Dyer Manifesting Meditation. It's like 20 minutes long, um, and there's a morning one and an evening one. In the morning they do ah, because ah is the sound for God in all yeah. cultures. That vowel sound oh. is found in all cultures' words for God. He had like 40 names of God that he showed, and every one of them was uh, ah. Wow. The God the frequency. Vowel. God frequency. Allah, yeah. Brahma. Mm -hmm. Right. All those different, yeah. Right. Wow. All the ahs. So toning that ah opens the heart space, because it's the, mo it's the sound we make without putting any inflection on our voice whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Right. Like just ah, you're not doing anything to your voice. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's that open source sound that we come from. Oh. That's so, interesting. And like baby's first words, they say mama or dad, as has that ah sound in it too. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. that's incredible. Yeah. Right. Look at me. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah, I was like, oh, wow, thanks. That was great. Uh, so if somebody wanted to experience a cacao ceremony, mm -hmm. uh, what, what's the best way for someone to dip their toe in this kind of thing? Because they're not going to go to Guatemala or Peru or Ecuador, although they're welcome to do so, uh -huh. right? Yeah, well, um, there are... I mean, I, I do them locally, occasionally. I kind of do them more seasonally now. I'm, you know, this is my like, I think my sixth year doing them, and it's it's you know it, it's evolved, you know, and, and I've I've done them at festivals. I've done them at um, all different places locally and everywhere, and with yoga swings and without yoga swings and all the different ways you can do cacao. Um, cool. So. so then, so then, do they just reach out to you? What's the best way for them to? How do they learn about these? Oh, where the, my my things are on on, on Facebook on my uh, Sound Healing Conservatory pages, where we have the main listings of all the sound and cacao events that mm -hmm. we have, uh, and the trainings and the classes. The Sound Healing Conservatory org is the website for uh, my sound healing classes, things. Uh, also, also the Ascension World Ego Campus is my uh, Facebook page, where we also have cacao events and some of the events up there and local events. Um, it's a spiritual organization that I started to uh, help everybody ascend. Fantastic. So, I know a lot of people, especially with COVID, you know, people are being more careful. They're doing things remotely. Um, a lot of the people that we interview do remote uh, healings. Mm -hmm. Is this something that someone could, if you had a class online kind of, or a ceremony, could they follow along? Like, could they get some sacred cacao and do this in their oh, home, yeah. follow along like, with you? That would be kind of neat. Yeah, that, that's something that could be doable. Like where you'd have them get the materials or you'd send them the materials to mm -hmm. make their own with you and you can kind of teach them. I, I actually, I've taught it a few times as like a, um, 
cacao ritual training, so like teaching people how to be facilitators themselves. Oh. And like the core aspect of what I teach is ritual mm -hmm. and understanding that everything we do is ritual all the time. Every method, everything that we do, we make a practice for it and we, we embed that practice in us and it shows up in everything we do, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like to be more cognizant and more aware of that, you know, it's, yeah. and it's like fine tuning. <laughs> and then the, the demonstration that you're going to give, so people that are listening to our podcast, mm -hmm. will they get some healing benefit from just from oh, what you're going to do Oh, yes. I actually, all of the things where I show up, um, I have um, an Insight Timer page where I stream meditations weekly on oh. Sunday mornings uh, from 8 to 9 a.m. And, um, but they have, it's, it's the number one free meditation app in the world. Um, and Insight Timer is. Insight yeah. Timer, yes. yeah. That's for, and you, you, can, you can subscribe to it, but you can also just be in there for free. And uh, I have six tracks on there right now. I'm about to put two more on um, sound. And uh, one of them is an Icaro. Um, there's a couple of different like angel meditations and there's four professionally recorded tracks of um, the bowls of me playing. Um, yeah, really good stuff. Right. Very cool. Well, we are looking forward to hearing and feeling the healing mm -hmm. frequencies that you're about to perform for yeah. us. Before we do that, I want to say thank you so much for ta coming yeah. and taking the time to explain and explore mm -hmm. sacred cacao and sound frequencies with us. Uh, and we encourage everyone to reach out to Brian and mm -hmm. participate because the more we can open our hearts in this world to each other, the better this world is going to be. So true yeah. and so important. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna leave you now with the sounds of uh, beautiful sound frequencies, <laughs> healing frequencies from Brian. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode. So uh, we want to thank you for tuning in this time around. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. With that, the floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> Calling yourself into a quiet, relaxed state. Taking a deep, full breath in. Connecting into your heart space, into your lungs, into your diaphragm. Breathing in deeper. Holding it. Being present with your heart thinking about something and someone you truly love and slowly breathing out into that space and just letting yourself relax into this moment. Relaxing into where you are and how you are and accepting it just as it is. And take another deep, full breath in, deep into your belly, deep into your lungs, breathing in deeper, holding it, holding in your heart now something you're truly grateful for, something you want to allow more of into your life and slowly breathe out into that space. And just let yourself relax, feeling calm, easy, at peace, allowing your spirit to clear of any disruptions, of any distractions, any extra attachments are falling away now in the sound.
Yang on
Finding yourself out in the silence now. Allowing the stillness into your life, into your experience, with every breath and every step on your path to wholeness and oneness. You allow your resonance, your love, vibration to echo through. As you allow this, it becomes and so it is. Slowly coming back towards your fingers and toes, your hands and feet, coming back, your arms and legs, finding yourself in your torso and behind your eyes as that still small eternal voice. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes feeling wide awake and wonderful. Thank you so much. And a huge thank you to you. We'd love for you to contribute by sending us a voicemail or an email from our website or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or any other podcasting platform that supports them. Karen and I love hearing from those that are moved to message us. It truly does fuel our passion. You are the reason we do this show. And knowing what you like and don't like help us craft the very best show we can so that we can help raise the vibration of the planet together. Well, that's all for now. We'll see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. Until then, take care.